The latest morning worship video by Gary Bro, a helper to the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, is a case study in irony and hypocrisy displayed by the Watchtower Society. The video seemingly warning Jehovah's Witnesses against the dangers of misinformation is itself riddled with misinformation. Let's take a look. Jehovah's Witnesses have long been subject to scrutiny regarding the information disseminated by their leadership, the governing body. And I want to start with a statement by Gary Bro at the end of the video. And what table can we trust? The table surrounded by our future kings, the governing body. So the governing body are seen as future kings amongst the Jehovah's Witnesses. With that in mind, let's look at how the video starts off. The text for the day, Daniel 11.27, the two kings will sit at one table speaking lies to each other. And as long as there has been human kings, well, lies have been told to the populace. Uh, the Greek philosopher Plato said this, the rulers of the state may be allowed to lie for the good of the state. And over the centuries, kings and rulers and diplomats have perfected their skills in diplomacy and deception. Now, the scriptures give us an example of a bold-faced lie by a diplomat. And if we turn to Isaiah 36, and verses 16 and 17, the one speaking here is the Rapshika. He was the a cupbearer of King Sennacherib. And here's what he says, 16, speaking to God's people, Do not listen to Hezekiah, for this is what the king of Assyria says. Make peace with me and surrender, and each of you will eat from his own vine and from his own fig tree and will drink the water of his own cistern until I come and take you to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards. He was promising peace and security, wasn't he? Um, but, but you see, what they had to do first was surrender to the king in order to get this peace and security that's being promised. But the thing is, Jehovah had promised peace and security to his people long before this. Effectively, what the Assyrian was doing was offering peace and security apart from Jehovah God. Obviously, you know the way the Assyrians handled their captives. They were vicious, and truly, this was an empty promise coming from the table of liars. So, bro, excuse the pun, the future kings, the governing body, have been allowed to lie for the good of the organization countless times. They even have a term for it, theocratic warfare. The doctrine of theocratic warfare is a controversial aspect of Jehovah's Witness theology that has sparked debate both within and outside the organization. And this doctrine allows Jehovah's Witnesses to engage in deception or dishonesty, often justified as a means of protecting the interests of the organization. The term theocratic warfare finds its roots in the teachings of the Jehovah's Witness organization, specifically in their interpretation of biblical principles regarding loyalty to God and his earthly representatives. And the concept is based on the idea that in times of persecution or conflict, Jehovah's Witnesses may employ strategic deception or concealment to further the interests of the organization and preserve its members. Teachings of the theocratic Warfare doctrine is the belief that Jehovah's Witnesses are engaged in a spiritual battle against Satan and his earthly agents. This battle is portrayed as a struggle for truth and righteousness in which deception may be employed as a dis defensive tactic to protect the organization and its members from persecution or harm. And the Washoe Bible Track Society, uh, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses, has provided guidance on the application of theocratic warfare in various scenarios. The guidance often emphasize the importance of maintaining loyalty to the organization above all else, even if it means withholding or distorting information or outright lying when deemed necessary. 
In 1986, the organization released a book called Worldwide Security Under the Prince of Peace. In addition, 1986 was named the International Year of Peace by the United Nations, and it sparked a frenzy amongst the Jehovah's Witnesses because of the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 that says, while people are saying peace and security, destruction will come on them suddenly. As a 16-year-old at the time, it instilled fear in me. Am I worthy to be spared at Armageddon? It seems so close. That was almost 40 years ago. Let's go back to our, our scripture in Daniel chapter 11. It is a fascinating uh, chapter, verses 27 and 28, is describing the time leading up to World War I. And there it says that the king of the north and the king of the south will sit at a table speaking lies. And that's exactly what happened. In the late 1800s, Germany, the king of the north, and Britain, the king of the, of the south, told each other that, that they, they wanted peace. They lied to each other and they lied to the people that were following them. One, gov one uh, German uh, general boasted, in two weeks, we shall defeat France. What really happened? Well, the lies of both of these kings resulted in massive destruction and millions of death in World War I and World War II later. There is absolutely no evidence that England and Germany were the king of the north and the king of the south. Where is your evidence, Gary Bro? The doctrine of the kings of the north and the south is a key component of Jehovah's Witness eschatology, shaping their understanding of world events and uh, fulfillment of biblical prophecy. However, this in interpretation has evolved significantly over the years, leading to shifts in doctrine and conflicting teachings. The doctrine of the kings of the north and the south finds its roots in the book of Daniel, specifically chapters 10 through 12, which contain prophecies concerning future conflicts and rulerships. And Jehovah's Witnesses interpret these passages uh, allegorically, identifying the kings of the north and the south as political powers vying for dominance in the world. Now, initially, Jehovah's Witnesses applied this inter interpretation to historical events, identifying the king of the north as successive world powers such as Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome, with the king of the south representing Egypt and later apostate Christianity. However, as world events unfolded and historical context changed, the interpretation of these prophecies shifted accordingly. And one of the most significant shifts in Jehovah's Witness understanding of the kings of the north and the south occurred in the 20th century, particularly with the rise of the organization's leadership under Joseph F. Rutherford. And Rutherford and subsequent leaders of the organization, notably Fred Franz, played a pivotal role in reinterpreting biblical prophecy to align with contemporary events and the organization's eschatological framework. During Rutherford's tenure, Jehovah's Witnesses identified the King of the North as initially representing Anglo-American imperialism and later the Soviet Union during the Cold War era. The King of the South was typically depicted as representing a coalition of nations or political entities opposed to Jehovah's Witnesses and their message. However, as geopolitical dynamics shifted and the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Jehovah's Witnesses were forced to reassess their interpretation of the kings of the north and the south, and this led to further revisions in doctrine, with the organization's leadership proposing alternative explanations to maintain the relevance of these prophecies in the modern era. It's of note that the liars will often shroud or cover their lie in truth. And a brief uh, math fact can illustrate that uh, we've talked about this recently. You recall that anything multiplied by zero ends up in zero, right? So no matter how many numbers are multiplied, if there's a zero that's multiplied in that equation, it's going to end up in zero. The answer is always a zero. The tactic that Satan uses is to insert something valueless or false in otherwise true statements. See, Satan is 
the zero. He's a giant zero. Anything that he is combined with will be valueless, will be a zero. So look for the zero in any equation of statements that cancels out all the other truths. Now, despite the fervent assertions of Jehovah's Witnesses regarding the fulfillment of biblical prophecy, there is little empirical evidence to support their interpretations of the kings of the north and the south. And these interpretations are highly speculative and often rely on selective readings of historical events to fit preconceived notions of fulfillment. Now, in our day, there is another group of men that are sitting at one table, our governing body. They never lie or deceive us. We can have absolute trust in the governing body. They meet all the criteria that Jesus gave us to identify them by. We know exactly who Jesus is using to protect his people from the lies. We just must stay alert. So in review, how can we identify a lie? Look for the zero, any component in a statement or teaching that cancels out a Bible truth. How can we avoid being caught up in the cry of peace and security? Well, Jehovah has already promised peace and security and has clearly forewarned us that a false cry will soon be coming. And what table can we trust? The table surrounded by our future kings, the governing body. So what Gary Bro is effectively saying is that Jehovah's Witnesses should forget about the many lies and false prophecies, like the UN scandal, the CSA cover-ups, the lies about shunning, the lie that the end will come in the 20th century, the misinformation about 607 BC, etc. And just keep trusting in the governing body because they never lie. It is ironic how a video purposely warning about misinformation is filled with misinformation. <laughs>